Today's show is sponsored by the MultiorgasmicMama.com. If lack of confidence, low libido, or guilt and shame around your sexuality are the cause of your bedroom woes, you know, the hot wild sex you never have anymore, or the transition into motherhood that sucked your libido dry, let me help you get your mojo and magnetic feminine spark back. Magic, miracles, total self-love, and multi-orgasmic bliss included. See you at the MultiorgasmicMama.com. Welcome back, Hot Mamas. Today, we are talking about the five senses and how when we live life tuned in and aware of all five senses that are happening right here, right now in this moment, life is just that much more freaking epic. And then I'm going to teach you a pleasure mindfulness practice for you to try throughout the day. If you want to experience more joy and more presence, not only in your daily life, but in your sexual experiences too. If you're one of those moms that are struggling with like being present with your kids, with like when every time they ask you to play with them, you really have a hard time just like stopping what you're doing and stopping your work and just like going and playing with your kids. I used to struggle with this so much until I started uh, relaxing a little bit and tuning into pleasure more. And kids have such an innate ability to just like screw work. Like it's time to play, you know, and they have so much to teach us about being able to tap into the present moment and just be here, right here, right now in the present and not give a shit about all the other stuff that's going on. And when I was raising my babies, you know, when they were much younger, they're nine and 12 now, but when they were younger, that's the one thing that they really taught me how to do was to prioritize pleasure and joy more because, you know, they don't care about all the busy work. They don't care about all the shit that's actually going on in the world. They're just like, dude, let's just be here right now and just have some fun. So I totally got like this transmission of pleasure and joy for my kids and learning how to play with them again when they were younger. And I just found this amazing tool that I want to share with you called pleasure mindfulness. And the awesome thing about the five senses though, that I want to mention is that It's impossible to not be in the present moment when you have all five senses activated and you're aware of all five senses going on in your environment. So maybe like if you're driving, if you're at home washing dishes, whatever you're doing, just like pay attention right here, right now. What are the five senses going on for you? What are you hearing? You're hearing my voice. What are you seeing? What are you touching or feeling? What do you smell? And what do you taste? So just tuning into all five senses helps you to just come into the present, right? It's impossible to have all five senses turned on and not be present. And that's the beauty of activating all five senses and living in the five senses reality. Now, The five senses are also correlated to the bottom five chakras. And when one of the senses is turned on, the correlating chakra is activated. So the smell, the sense of smell is correlated to your root. Taste is correlated to the sacral chakra. Sight is correlated to the solar plexus. Touch is correlated to the heart. And sound is correlated to your throat chakra. And it doesn't surprise me that when I guide women through experiencing their greatest desire in the five senses reality, a lot of times they really struggle with, you know, feeling or imagining what they might taste if they had what they wanted. And that's because the the taste is related to the sacral chakra and the sacral chakra is the most in need of healing on the planet at this time. It's the one that I basically help women to activate and open because 
Well, the things that close the sacral chakra are repressed emotions and inner childhood wounding and traumas. So the repressed emotions most commonly that I see are resentment towards your husband. Do you have that? Mm. Resentment towards your husband for not helping out more, even though you don't ask for his help. (laughs) That's super common. Um, Other repressed emotions that I see are sadness and grief from heartbreak or trauma or loss or being rejected. And also, Uh, inner child trauma or wounding that you've never truly resolved. Now you can say, Oh, I did, I I did all the inner child work with my, with my therapist. But if you have, uh, if you lack desire, sexual desire, and you don't experience a lot of joy in your life, I'm going to tell you, well, then you're not done with your inner child work, sweetheart. Sorry. Uh, Inner child work is super, super deep. And until you get into an empowered place, you don't break the patterns. Okay. So the inner child, you can create boundaries with your inner child. You can uh, reparent your inner child. And if you're not constantly reparenting your inner child until the pattern has broke, uh, then your inner child is going to continue to show up. So eventually you've got to empower another identity inside of you. If you haven't gotten to that place of empowerment, then the cycle is not truly broke. And you're still going to create circumstances that are less than ideal in your sex life and your relationships. So basically, repressed emotions and unprocessed childhood traumas are the things that cause our sacral chakras to close. And then women wonder where their desire for sex went. (laughs) They wonder why they don't feel good in their own skin. They wonder where the pleasure and the joy of life went. Well, basically, it just went away with your unprocessed emotions and your childhood traumas. So that's why to go from surviving in sex, love, and relationships to thriving in them, you have to stop thinking that building bridges on the shaky foundation of unresolved trauma is going to actually do anything for you or to transform things permanently for you instead of doing the deep inner work and digging the tunnels underground and going in under the surface and finding the gold underneath. So all of us want the shortcut. We want to go, oh, I just want, I want to become multi-orgasmic overnight, you know, I, but I'm not actually willing to do the work, the deep inner work necessary to get there. Or I just want to experience more pleasure. I want to have different types of orgasms. Sure you do. But unless you're doing the deep inner work to get there, you're probably never going to get there. So that's why you have to go into the deep inner work if you want to create any true and lasting change and transformation. And when you've done the inner work, you're going from the old paradigm of which is like a patriarchal world order that says, how much can I bear as a woman, right? How much can I bear as a mom? How much can I bear as a wife to how good can it be? How good can I let my life be? How good can I let my relationship be? How good can I let my sexual experiences be? And this idea comes from the book Patriarchy Stress Disorder, which I've been talking about a lot on social media lately by Dr. Valerie Rang. It's an epic book (laughs) and it gives a beautiful map to how to go from surviving to thriving and to, to break past the invisible barriers that keep us from living in our true happiness and joy as women, mothers, wives, whatever. Uh, career women too. So there's basically like this big um, glass ceiling or invisible barrier over the amount of pleasure and joy that we as women let into our lives because we all got raised under patriarchy. So today I wanted to share with you the pleasure mindfulness practice that comes from the book Patriarchy Stress Disorder by Dr. Valerie Rang. And if you have not read that book yet or have heard of it, I highly encourage you to go read it. It is amazing. It's epic. And so much of it is uh, what all of my clients and potential clients, uh, a lot of my audience is going through and experiencing themselves. So 
if that sounds interesting to you, I highly suggest you pick it up on Amazon and read the things. Not on Audible yet, but maybe it will be sometime soon. So this pleasure mindful practice is going to help you move from the surviving paradigm of how much can I bear to how good can this be? But only if you have at least begun the process of digging underground already and doing the deep inner work. So if you find this practice difficult or nearly impossible because you just cannot be present with your thoughts and your emotions, then that's a sign that you need to do the deep inner work and start processing all of the shit that's in the way of you being able to enjoy your life. But if you're already working through some of that or already have worked through some of that, then I want you to try out this four step pleasure mindfulness practice for more pleasure and joy throughout the day. And when you learn it and you practice it, you can actually try this out in your sexual experiences too, whether you're making love with your partner or you're having sex with yourself and self pleasure. The first step is to start by noticing any experience that gives you pleasure in the moment. So it could be something as simple as feeling the sun on your skin, feeling the warmth, feeling the heat of the coffee cup that you're holding, or the coolness on a hot summer day of the iced tea that you might be holding, or tasting the delicious food in your mouth that you're eating and savoring it. You just want to notice a pleasurable experience. And when you catch yourself in that pleasurable moment, you're going to notice what you're experiencing in this moment and all five senses as best you can. And you're going to hold that awareness in all five senses for at least 10 seconds to allow your brain time to imprint this experience in your mind. And then the third step is you're going to ask yourself, how can I enhance this pleasurable experience? How can I enhance it? How can I make it even more pleasurable? And there are two ways to do this. First, you can open up more permission to experience pleasure by asking yourself, what more could I take in with this moment? And how long can I stay here? And then second, you can adjust something in the environment to make it more pleasurable. So just noticing, can you shift something in your environment to be more comfortable? Maybe deepen your breath, maybe release your shoulder muscles, just relax them a little bit. Maybe you need to turn the fan on or off, or maybe you need to turn the music up or down a little bit. Just get closer to the thing that you want to see in more detail. So all of these little bitty tweaks and adjustments that you can tune into to adjust in your environment to make it even more pleasurable. And then the fourth step is that when you begin to develop an awareness of what's pleasurable, you can create what we call pleasure triggers. So like what scents or textures appeal to you? What sights and sounds hold your attention? And as you identify the common objects and these things that you enjoy in your everyday life, you can use them as triggers to help you practice anchoring your awareness and pleasure and drop into the present moment and really experience the joy of the present moment. Ah, oh, so yum, so yum. I've been practicing this myself for the past couple of weeks, just going on walks down my neighborhood and just letting that sun uh, really warm my skin. Oh my gosh, it's like enhanced my level of present moment awareness and joy so incredibly much. And it's such a simple process. And when you start the pleasure mindfulness practice, you're going to start with things and experiences that are naturally pleasurable, that are already good, that you know that are going to be easy to drop into the present moment. And then you're going to take it more into neutral type experiences where, eh, you know, maybe this isn't necessarily a pleasurable experience that I'm having, but it's not bad either. And once you master that and be getting in all, all five senses and like neutral experiences and being present with the neutral experiences, you can try it in the unpleasant experiences too. Like for example, when your kid is throwing a tantrum, <laughs> it's going to be very challenging, but if that's happening, how can you make that experience of your kid throwing a tantrum that much more better? How good can you let that experience be? So 
I have constantly been asking myself, how good can I let this be? How good can I let this moment be? How good can I let it be? And just by asking yourself that question over and over again, it's amazing how your external environment is going to shift and how, you know, when you just focus on that instead of how much can I bear, how much in your life is going to shift very rapidly. So the more you practice the pleasure mindfulness, the easier it's going to be to find pleasure, even in the things that aren't naturally or, you know, um, the things that aren't just naturally fun and pleasurable to begin with. All right, mamas. So I wanted to let you know that the early bird bonuses for the May 2020 round of the Essentially Embodied Woman group coaching program, which is currently going on for our first round that started in February. We are on week three and it is just going so amazingly well. The women are having such amazing breakthroughs and I'm so freaking proud of them. Uh, but the May round Early bird bonuses expire in just three and a half weeks. So if you're at all interested, you need to head there and get your application call scheduled now. So go to themultiorgasmicmama.com forward slash sensually dash embodied dash woman. There are not many call time slots available. So I would highly suggest you get your call booked now. And the bonuses for applying and joining before April 1st, 2020 include an early bird discounted rate. So the rates will go up after April 1st. And then for the May round, you have until April 29th, but the rates will be uh, more expensive after the first. And then you get an extended six month payment plan, which makes it super affordable. And you get two free one-on-one -on -one office hour sessions with me. And if you happen to live in the New Orleans, Louisiana area, you get free entrance to any local event that I put on in New Orleans. So that is over $1,000 worth of bonuses for free, mama, just for applying and joining for the May round by April 1st. I know many of you all get your tax returns very shortly too. So if that's something that you are getting for yourself, your family, you got multiple kids, you're getting even more, woohoo, go you. Well, don't forget to invest in yourself. Even if it's not this, treat yourself, mama. You deserve it. You so deserve it. Your kids deserve it. They deserve essentially embodied mama because when you can tap into that on the daily, well, it makes playing with them and being present with them that much easier. All right, mamas, thank you so much for joining and I will talk to you next week. Bye-bye.